if I understood correct, you find some fossils of cyanobacteria in meteorite. Yes. But my question, where from this meteorite? <laughs> We, the best evidence that the carbonaceous, the CI1 carbonaceous meteorites, the mm -hmm. best evidence for their parent bodies, mm -hmm. is a comet. In fact, uh, uh, the CM2s uh, have been associated with Comet Finley. Uh, there, there is a lot of, of reason to think that the, the parent body of the carbonaceous meteorites are comet from the mineralogy, from the extensive aqueous alteration of all the minerals. There's been an enormous amount of water on the, on the parent body. So my personal thinking is that the parent body of these meteorites are comets, which could explain why the biology looks just like Earth biology. They could have accreted Earth biology by coming through ejecta fields from huge impacts on the Earth, or they could have delivered biology to Earth as they fall into the ancient oceans. Either way, would give an identical set of biological entities that would have exactly the same characteristics and be indistinguishable. Thank you. It is known that a part of meteorites, at least once a very well, uh, because they contain uh, specific texture, chondra in chondra. Uh, speak up, I have trouble hearing you. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you know any data concerning possible melted state of comets that could provide opportunities for life there? Any data concern, concerning the possible what possible, of comets? Yes, melted state of comets. Ah, possible melted state of comets. Yeah. Well, uh, we know that the dominant volatile of comets is water. We know that comets get hot, and physics says that when you raise water to a temperature above zero Celsius, it is going to go first from, based on phase change diagram of water, first from solid to liquid, and then it provided there is, uh, there is pressure, uh, if, there, if it is in vacuum, the surface ices would go directly from solid to gas. But we know that comets have a black crust and therefore there would be regimes beneath this black crust of rock and, and melted organic type material in which the pressure would first start building up and once the pressure gets above 10 millibars then the ice goes from solid to liquid state before it goes to gaseous state. So from physics I can tell you I am absolutely certain that every comet develops pools of liquid water as it approaches the sun and gets closer to the sun than the orbit of the planet Mars. And that water stays and circulates throughout portions of the comet between the surface and the inner core until it starts going back out again wherein it freezes. And then it remains in frozen state and any biology that was there would freeze. But what David Gilichinsky has shown and what Sabita Buizov have shown is that when you take bacteria and you freeze them, you put them in suspended animation and they can remain alive for millions of years. Uh, uh, a short question. Uh, all uh, carbonic uh, meteorites, carbonic chondrites, uh, have uh, biosignatures. You demonstrated biosignatures, as I, as I understood you. Uh, and uh, all maybe they are uh, uh, carbonic chondrites without biosignatures. Ah, are there carbonaceous chondrites without biosignatures? Yeah. There are carbonaceous chondrites that I have not found microfossils in. Yeah. But I, I, I think all of the carbonaceous chondrites have been found to contain amino acids. I may be wrong about that. Do you happen to know, Alexi? I guess it's hard to say when you use the word all. I, I should put it this way. I know all of the CI1 carbonaceous meteorites contain amino acids. All of the CM2 carbonaceous meteorites contain amino acids. And nucleobases, and in fact, Murchison contains tens of thousands of complex organic chemicals. So uh, uh, that's as broad as I guess I should go. But what about fossils? Uh, ah, what about fossils? Well, we found fossils in a lot of them. Uh, 
but uh, some are really prolific. Uh, Orgaya is very prolific. Uh, Murchison is very prolific. Some, you find some fossils, but not so many. You have to work harder. Sometimes, like we did once, uh, hunting for two days on Nikolskaya, as Alexei will recall, and we found nothing. And I finally said, what kind of carbonaceous chondrite is this? I don't know, Nazarov did not tell me. So we started looking. We found out that we had done a stupid test because we didn't know what we were looking at and it turned out to be a stony meteorite. If we were imagining fossils in meteorites, we should have found fossils in that stony meteorite when we thought it was a carbonaceous chondrite. So there's some kind of echinets in meteorites. You showed echinets. Well, uh, what the differences in, in the mental composition? In fossilized in the echinet? Yes. yes. And that echinet contained about 2% nitrogen. Yes. That, that echinet, or well, I'm not sure whether it was an echinet or a heterocyst. The, the, the big round A, yes, yes. it's hard to tell whether something's an echinet or a heterocyst. I understand. So it may have been a heterocyst, but it contained 2% nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, it, heterocysts are where the nitrogenase enzyme is located and where the nitrogen fixation process occurs. And so maybe it was a heterocyst and it had produced a lot of nitrogen and there was still residual amount of the, of the nitrogen materials that had been produced th that made it possible to detect nitrogen in that particular form.